Hey guys, Lizzie here and welcome back to my channel. So it has been a while since I've made a video regarding like tattoos or stick and pokes or anything like that. So um, I wanted to make another video on it because my two most popular videos on my channel are my advice for stick and pokes and my stick and poke aftercare video. So I still stand by the information that I put in those videos. So I'm going to keep them up. But I also wanted to sort of revise and condense everything a little bit to make information a little bit more easy to understand and to like have everything in one place. But there is an appeal with stick and pokes and people are going to do them no matter what. So I think it's better to be educated and use the right tools and be safe about it than to say just don't do it. Um, and I've been seeing way too many like, oh, I used pen ink comments on that video and that is it's not okay it might have turned out okay for you there's so many bad things in like pen ink and printer ink and sharpie ink and all of that stuff so I wouldn't recommend injecting it into your skin <laughs> please the big thing I want to stress in the intro of this video is don't use pen ink <laughs> like I know it's it's worked for some people but it's still so bad for your body just because pen ink is not meant to go in your skin. With that being said, I do want to talk about the materials that you should be using for stick and pokes, both the more professional route and the more homemade route. They're okay if you're safe about it. One is better than the other, but it's gonna happen no matter what. So I want you guys to be as prepared as you possibly can be. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about is needles. So I've done a lot more research lately and I still think that sewing needles can be used. They're not the best thing to use. Um, ideally, you should be using sterile tattoo needles, um, preferably the 3RL or 5RL, or the round liner tattoo needles. Um, they give you a very clean, crisp line, and they're meant to hold tattoo ink, so they make the whole process so much easier. So if you can get your hands on some, um, some actual tattoo needles, I'll I'll leave some links in the description down below on different ones that I found. They're not too terribly expensive and you can get a lot of them in bulk. However, you still can use sewing needles um, with string wrapped around them. That is the most like common homemade way to do a stick and poke. I would recommend running the needle through a flame first and then just wiping everything down with rubbing alcohol just to make sure everything is sterile and clean because the last thing you want to do is get an infection in a stick and poke. <laughs> um, just clean everything. Um, sewing needles do hurt more and they take a lot longer to complete than a, a tattoo needle because a sewing needle wrapped in string isn't really meant to hold ink. It gets the job done but you're gonna be left with a very dotty tattoo. It's not gonna be very crisp and it's a lot easier to mess up with a sewing needle because you can't exactly see like where you're going with it. And then um, for outlining the tattoo, because I did get a few comments about this too, um, you want to use like non-toxic markers just because that would probably be the best thing to, um, to outline the tattoo without like the risk of maybe getting the pen ink or sharpie ink in your skin. Like surgical pen markers, I'll leave those linked down below. I'll link some non-toxic markers down below. Those all work and I think that they would be the best for outlining a tattoo. Um, so I'll leave those in the description as well. And then going into actual ink that you're sticking in your skin, once again, please do not use pen ink. There's one thing I wanna stress over and over again, do not use pen ink. I, I just, I've seen way too many comments <laughs> just saying, well, I use pen ink. Please just go to a craft store, go on Amazon, go on Michael's website, buy some Higgins India ink, or even like Speedball Indian ink. I will link multiple different inks down below for you guys to choose from. Tattoo ink is always best. I'll put some of those down below as well, um, just so you have some options. But please, I cannot say this enough. Don't use pen ink. Like, I know it seems like a good idea and it like it'll work, but it's just not the same. There are so many chemicals in pen ink. 
it could increase the risk of infection, your body could completely reject it because of the chemicals, just please either use tattoo ink or India ink. Both of those are okay. Both of those can be used for stick and pokes. Don't use <laughs> pen ink. I just, I want to see everybody succeed out there in stick and pokes. And I just, I don't want to see anybody like get infected or anything like that or, you know, have something really bad happen to their skin. Um, just please don't use pen ink. So with all that being said, and all of the supplies are linked down below, I'm going to give some overviews on um, aftercare and taking care of it whilst you're giving yourself the tattoo. So you want to keep your skin clean with rubbing alcohol while you're giving it too. So like when you're wiping it down, use a little bit of rubbing alcohol mixed with water just so you can like wipe away any germs that might be there and just keep it clean and sterile. And you know, it is a real tattoo. Like Things can get infected very easily considering that you're not in a completely sterile tattoo studio. So please just wipe down your surfaces with rubbing alcohol before you do anything. Wipe down your skin with it. Wipe down all of your materials where you put the ink, your needles, your handles, everything with rubbing alcohol. Um, also, do not reuse your needles. Transferring needles between two different people is very bad because you don't know if that person has a bloodborne illness or anything like that. But also don't reuse them on yourself just because it's unsanitary and it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to reuse needles on other people or yourself. Just don't do it. Throw them away when you're done. Don't risk it. <laughs> so after that, you've given yourself the tattoo. You want to keep it covered for at least, I would say, 24 to 48 hours. I typically keep my professional ones covered for 24 hours first. And then after the first 24 hours, I will cover them to sleep. The same thing goes for stick and pokes. I would just use some cling film or like some saran wrap or whatever you guys call it. And you want to clean it every few hours. Um, whenever I have a tattoo, I typically clean it in the morning when I first wake up and at night before I go to bed. You know, I check on it through the day and see if it looks gross or if it needs anything done to it. You just want to wash it with a gentle soap. Preferably unscented, but really anything that's like gentle enough for skin will do. I'll link some down below that work. I'll link some of my favorites down below for washing a tattoo. And another thing is that yes, you can get your tattoo wet, but no, you can't fully submerge it for, I forget how long it is. It's a pretty long time. Stick and pokes, I would say, are a little bit more lenient than uh, professional tattoos. I would say maybe go two to three weeks without fully submerging it. So that would be like swimming, bathtubs, but like water from a shower is completely fine. You just don't wanna completely put it underwater for extended periods of time. It's just not good for the tattoo. And then uh, you also wanna put some unscented lotion on it or some gentle lotion on it to keep it from drying out. Stick and pokes still can have the risk of scabbing up and drying and then losing ink. It's just not cool. So keep it moisturized with whatever you have. Again, I'll put links down below to everything. And then like, treat it like a real tattoo because it is a real tattoo. It is a real tattoo. Like this tattoo on my hand, it says UGG. You've seen it in my tattoo tour video. I've had this thing for, how old am I now? I'm 19, I think I got it when I was 15. I've had this tattoo for four years, hasn't faded hasn't budged. All of my stick and pokes still look really uh, bold and dark even three to four years later. So yes, they are real tattoos. Yes, they are 100% permanent. So be smart in choosing your design. Make sure it's something you want on your body forever. I personally have a few that I regret now. Please think about your design. Draw it on for a few days before you give yourself the stick and poke to make sure you're 100% certain with it. Please don't give yourself a stick and poke if you're like under the age of 16. Um, just because you're still so young and like you don't know what you want to do for a career path yet. I mean, I personally don't know what I want to do for a career path yet. And like tattoos are becoming more accepted in the world. But 
you know there still are a few professions where they're not as accepted which is really sad because tattoos don't affect character I think that's it <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, again links to everything that I said are in the description down below um, you know to needles to ink to aftercare to everything I will have it all organized that is a complete stockpile of stick and poke information down there um, I'll link to some of my favorite blogs and some of my favorite websites um, for information but yeah that's it um, be safe be smart uh, and have fun <laughs> because stick and pokes while they are a very serious thing they are a lot of fun and they create a lot of fun memories but again be safe <laughs> be smart and uh, I will see you guys in whatever video I happen to make next <laughs>